Okay, hello all. This time we are taking a look at graphing piecewise functions, which is from R section 2.6. <clears throat> I'm jumping right to a three-step one, which is a the top level problem that I would assume that you guys will be able to do. Um, so here we've got three different sections, okay? F of X has three conditions. And again, as we talked about in class, um, you're essentially, it's like sorting laundry or you've got a sorting bin going on. Um, if X is less than negative two, we do this. If x are actually less than or equal to negative 2, we're going to do this rule. If x is anywhere larger than negative 2 and all the way up into including 1, then we're going to do this rule here. And last but not least, if um, x is bigger than 1, then we do this rule. Okay. There are three steps. And part of what's going on, and the most important step I would probably say is this one, where you really need to be able to identify your pivot points or, um, or your transitions. Okay. And so that is, in this case, is where x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 1. It's these spots right, let's see if I can get a nice highlighter going. Um, it's, you know, these spots right here. Okay, and now notice it always overlaps, and we're going to get to that overlap in a second. Um, step two is that after we do that, we're going to go through and we're going to find three points in each of these different sections to plot. Um, and the most important part is this including pivots um, because you need to be able to see where you're shifting from one graph to another. And even though this is like, if, for example, um, we only use this function where x is greater than 1, remember as soon as we come off of 1, so 1.000005 or whatever, we're on this rule. So that's going to, you know, it's the old open circle, closed circle option. And then down here in step 3, after we do that, we're going to graph each section, but I would say you need to make sure you do each point separately. My apologies here. Um, but again, you're going to graph, these, graph each of these things separately, so you're going to graph the first section, plot the points, graph, the th graph it. Plot the second point, set of points, graph it. Plot the third set of points, graph it. So again, find the pivot points. Find points to plot, including the pivots, and then do the graph. Now, in terms of finding those points, what I would suggest doing is just make a simple t-chart. And so we're going to make a t-chart here, and x and y. And we're going to just pick points that are important. Now, here in the first one, the pivot point's at negative 2, so we have to include negative 2. I'm going to put a line here to actually separate it out. And then we're going to have to go points smaller than that, so I'd include negative 3, and I would include negative 4. Um, I would also say here at negative 2, since I've got this less than or equal to sign, I would say make a dot there so that you know that, okay, this is the filled in dot side, which means that, of course, on the other side, we're going to go open dot. Now, for these points, again, you have to include the pivot. So in this case, I'm going to have to include the negative 2. I'm also going to have to go back here and include a 1 because that's up here. Pivot point negative 2 goes all the way up to and includes 1. So again, we're going to come back here and use... You filled in dot here. Now, it doesn't matter what other point you use in between here. So I'm going to go ahead and suggest that we use 0 um, because that makes your life easier. Um, if these were not linear, I mean, again, we know that these are not linear because you have powers of 1. But if they're squared, if they're square roots and things like that, then at that point, you're going to want to probably consider doing more points so you get a more accurate curve. But since these are all linear, three points are fine to make sure that you're not making mistakes. And then back here, um, after one, we have to do the pivot point again and then pick two more points just again to prevent mistakes. And then here on this one, since this x is greater than one, it's an open circle. And again, think about how you'd graph x is greater than one on a number line. You'd have a number line, open circle on one, shading to the right. So, um, so now we've got to find some values. So up here you've got two times negative four plus five. So I'm just taking this first function up here, plugging in negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. So that would be, what, negative 8 plus 3 plus 5 is negative 3. If I plug in the negative 3, I'd get negative 6 plus 5, which would give me negative 1. And then if I plug in a negative 2, I'd get a positive 1 out. So those would be our three sets of points there. Um, I would say go ahead and just plot these now. I mean, you can either find all the points and then plot them separately or find each section and plot those. That might be a better way to go. So over here, we've got negative 4, negative 3. So there's a point there. And then we've got negative 3, negative 1, and we've got a point there. And then at negative 2, positive 1, and again, so that's a filled in dot. And again, that's the whole reason why I'm putting a filled in dot here, circle dot here, so we know which one to do. So that holds anything less than negative 2, we're going to fall on that line. 
So we're going to go ahead and draw in a ray. Oops, just lost it. We're going to draw a ray in from here down. Okay. So then for the second area, again, we're just going to go back and plug in points. So um, here we're going to use the second function. So I'm going to plug in negative 3 times negative 2 and get 6. Um, I'm going to go to negative 3 times 0 and get 0. And then I'm going to take negative 3 times 1 and get negative 3. And we're going to go ahead and plot this point. So here at 2, now again, remember this is an open circle because as soon as we move off the negative 2 and get to negative 1.9 repeating, we're jumping from the first graph to the second graph. I'm going to go all the way up to 6. Oh, I forgot to scale this. So 2 and 2. So 2, 4, 6. I'm going to be right up here, open circle again. 0, 0, I'll be down here. And then at 1, negative 3, I'll be right here. And then again... Plot your line. Um, and there's the second part. And for the third part, you're going to go through and you're going to say, all right, let's plug in the points. So I've got 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. Um, 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. And 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. Now notice in this case, the, trans the pivot point here, instead of having this gap here, is the same um, in both the first graph, or in the second graph, and the third graph. So here, 1 matches up with negative 3, 1 matches up with negative 3, and that's fine. Um, you don't have to necessarily draw an open circle around here since the overlap is there. Um, you just go on and say, okay, 1 and 3, already have a point there, we're good to go. 2, negative 2, plot a point. 3, negative 1, plot a point. And then from there, graph your line. Okay. Now again, the simpler ones where you only have two sections, you're only going to have two parts of the graph. If I have three sections, I'm going to have three sections of the graph, four sections, four sections of the graph. Um, your pivot number of pivot points should always be one less than the total number of sections that you have, but that should get you through um, graphing piecewise functions. And again, you can go through and have curves and squares and stuff, in which case then the graph would just be curved. So, but that should get you all set for section 2.6 graphing piecewise functions, and thank you so much. See you in class.